Hey, everybody, welcome to a new edition of the Pat Tomasulo podcast. It's a beautiful day here in Chicago. 36 inches of snow have now accumulated on the ground. And uh, I'm ready to move to Guam or anywhere else because this is getting ridiculous. I'm going to do this podcast. I'm going to make it as long as I possibly can because the second it's over, I got to go out and shovel out my car from the alley. (laughs) Had to get a, uh, a ride home from work today. I had an interesting thing happen today at the day job. And James, I know it's been a long time since you've had a day job. Maybe never that you've had a day job where you... It's been a minute. Yeah, where you've worked in an office around people. But I was walking through the building today, and I saw somebody I knew that I hadn't seen in a while, and that I was excited to see. But they were a little bit far down the hallway, right? And I knew they were going one way, I was going the other. But I saw them, and I was like, hey, what's up, dude? And then they said, hey, what's (laughs) up? And then they turned around, you know, like a normal... Passing, right. normal thing that you have with a buddy. And I was excited to see him. But here's the thing. So yeah. he turns down the hall, no longer able to be seen in the hallway. And somebody farther down the hall from him turns around thinking I was talking to them. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and so I was like, huh. And they were like, oh, hey, hey. And I was like, ah, that wasn't meant for you. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I don't want there to be any misunderstanding here. You're a fine person, but the, I, don't, I don't reserve that kind of enthusiasm for you. And you're good. You're fine. I, you're a pleasant person. But the guy that just turned around, he's my guy. He's my buddy. And I don't want this to turn into a conversation. I, a simple, because there are some people at work that you're a, you're a stop and converse with. And right. there are some people at work that it's a it's a it's a stop it's a and trap. go. It's a stop and go. It's a hey hey I'm leaving. They know it, you know it. But this person they didn't really know if it was a if it was a stop and talk or a stop and go. And they they stuttered for a second and they were awkward and I just kept going. But it's also like, you know, there's a certain leverage in a relationship with every interpersonal communication, sure. and uh, you know, kind of feel like. Anyway, so uh, (laughs) let's talk about what I think uh, is on a lot of people's minds today. You know, we live in a in a time, you know, 2020 was a time of of really raising the issue of of racial injustice. It was a time for seeking equality that was long overdue. Uh, It was a time for. Uh, being an ally to those who've who've not gotten equal justice. And mm-hmm. we've seen a lot of American institutions over the last year be questioned, their histories be questioned, their integrity be questioned, institutions that uh, perhaps we never questioned before that we're seeing in a whole new light. Mm-hmm. Policing, um, criminal justice, and those... Those hurt to really realize, but I'm not sure that I felt the level of hurt I did this week when racial injustice and equality uh, was an issue that uh, enveloped perhaps our most sacred institution in this country, uh, The Bachelor. (laughs) What? You know, you can come for our rights, but when you, when the bachelor is no longer sacred, when the bachelor is no longer a safe space for people who've known each other for an hour and a half to tongue each other to death and spend nights in the fantasy suite and meet each other's parents after 11 days, then my God, what hope is there for us as a country? What hope is there for us to get along, for everybody to be equal when Chris Harrison, the host of The Bachelor, 
wades into some murky racial waters. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell. You know how my parents would say, where were you on the day Kennedy was shot? I will always remember where I was the day I heard about Chris Harrison's interview on Extra. It will be carved into my heart, carved into my soul for as long as I shall live. (laughs) There are so many layers to unpack to this story that I, I, I don't know where to start. Now, for some context, for those who've not been paying attention, it was discovered that a current contestant on The Bachelor back in 2018 went to an antebellum-themed party, which, for those of you who don't know, antebellum is emblematic of the Old South. Not a good look. Not... Not a time in history or a theme you necessarily want to celebrate. And Chris Harrison was on the Extra or Access Hollywood or some one of those bullshit stories. And he's talking to a correspondent on Extra who happens to be a former Bachelor contestant. And she is African American. And she asks Chris Harrison about these pictures. It's an easy response, Chris Harrison. It's an easy response. You just say, ah, terrible. <laughs> terrible. Why, why would you do that? I don't condone it. What are they going to do? I don't know. I'm just the host. I'm just the guy. I'm just the, the pretty face with enough Botox in his head to paralyze an elephant who goes out there and says a couple of scripted lines that have been vetted by easily 11 executives. And that's all I do. I'm not a decision guy, but me, no, terrible. Instead, what does he decide to do? He decides to go on an entire defense of this woman, saying it was three years ago, and then he gets challenged, and this is the sword he dies on, invoking the woke police, invoking... Whether it was right in 2018, just, you're a dope who hosts The Bachelor. You were a sportscaster that got plucked from Oklahoma City and won the TV lottery. You just know Chris Harrison, what are they on, season 97 of The Bachelor? This guy's job is going to tropical resorts, working an hour and a half a day, not writing a goddamn thing he says, getting his hair and makeup and wardrobe provided, and is probably worth about $20 million, and it wasn't good enough. I bet this guy was sitting at home, talking to his girlfriend or his whatever he's got, and he's just like, you know, I just, yeah, I get to go to Bora Bora, and I get to, you know, beyond, but I, I really want to be taken seriously. <laughs> I just, I feel like people are only ever going to see me as the bachelor guy. And he gets on, he woke up that day of the interview and got asked that question. And the little voice inside his head said, today's the day. <laughs> Today is the day where CH, C hair, Old Chrissy Chris makes his stand. I can't deal with it anymore. I am more than a, than a bachelor host. I'm more than that. And it's time the world knows. Now, now that we've established that he's an idiot, let's examine the other side now. Certainly should not have defended the remarks, but people are outraged. People are upset. Now, I'm never excusing any kind of uh, defense of any kind of uh, racial insensitivity, but if you are outraged by something said by a guy who's only known for ever saying before this, we're down to two roses, well, then maybe you need to reconsider 
what you get upset about. I'm not sure that The Bachelor... Let me just say this. Everybody on The Bachelor is horrible. All of them. They're all horrible, and nobody involved with that show deserves happiness in their life. Yeah, I said it. I hope... <laughs> I hope they all have horrible lives. You think anybody who... You're getting your moral cues and your outrage from The Bachelor? You're going to be upset? Just go into that show knowing that they're all vapid, empty people. They're all... And they've... they I mean, you're talking about people who literally, after four and a half hours of meeting somebody, are in love. What, what is going on? What is go... Chris Harrison, the Bachelor host. We're upset. He stepped down. He stepped down. God forbid. How is that show ever going to go on? Where are they ever going to find another average-looking, mildly talented white guy to fill in and host that show? Where are they going to find one? Chris Harrison couldn't just leave well enough alone. You couldn't just keep your mouth shut. Do you have an opinion? No, I have. It's bad. What's your opinion? You tell me your opinion and then I'll agree with it. Because whatever, because I I don't have an opinion in this situation unless it's the right one. It's, it's been a banner week for D-list celebrities getting in trouble for saying <laughs> stupid things. Yes. Gina Carano, they were pissed about her. I'm like, dude, cool. like I could see if it was the Mandalorian saying those things. But, like, she's the eighth lead on the show. Who's... <laughs> right, yeah. Because it's not like she was on CNN saying that. Like, you really had to do a deep dive to know what Gina Carano was saying. Like, and she deserved to be fired. I mean, you work for a, a private company, you work for Disney, you say do, dopey things, you're gonna, you know. Yeah. But it's, like, uh, outraged. I, I, I could... I don't care enough about Gina Carano. Gina Carano does not have a voice that is loud enough to impact the, uh, the public discourse. No. <sighs> I was reading, uh, you ever go down to Florida? You know the, uh, the Publix supermarkets? Sure. Yeah. Publix is fantastic. They're in trouble now. what Be they do? Well, because the heir to the Publix uh, fortune, the guy who started Publix, his daughter, I don't even know if she's involved. She gave 300000 to support that uh, Stop the Steal uh, rally in uh, D.C. So, well. so people are upset about her. <laughs> and, go. you know, any of those people who are saying that they're going to boycott Publix have obviously never had a Publix sub. Because if you've had a Publix submarine sandwich, that could really make you waffle on your, on your morals. <laughs> I always think about that. Like, all right, first of all, you know, Every, every corporation has evil people in it. It's like the Disney thing. Like one of the shareholders of Disney is, is like Rand Seagram's beverage corporation for years. Like there are unscrupulous people in every business. But I see this a lot, these corporate boycotts. You know, people are, every, every company is run by a billionaire who's probably, you know, killed a few people in their life to get his million in Publix, it reminds me of like when people are always boycotting Amazon. Like some products are just too good to boycott. Jeff Bezos, yeah, he's probably evil. He's probably evil. But is he evil enough for me to give up two-day shipping on a Nutribullet? I don't know. <laughs> if I'm going to give up prime shipping on an air fryer... You gotta, you gotta approach Saddam Hussein levels of evil for me to really start considering it. You know, I, I you know, people hate Amazon. They want to boycott Amazon. Let's see how much you hate Amazon. The next time your mother's birthday is on a Wednesday, and you remember on a Monday. Let's see how much you hate Amazon then. Unless you want to start putting thought into the gifts you get for people again. Because I don't. I like, I like being able to do all of my Christmas shopping in 20 minutes for my entire extended family. Who has the time? 
who has the time to legitimately boycott companies? Who has the time? Nobody important. That's who has the time. <laughs> Nobody important. <laughs> Nobody who has a lack of free time. Nobody's ever said... Nobody's ever said, you know what? I know I'm the only doctor on staff and I wish I could stick around and work on more of these patients, but unfortunately, I got to go block the entrance to an Amazon warehouse in 20 minutes. So I got to get out of here. I wish I could do it. I wish I could do it. Who's sitting at home being like, uh, honey, you got to watch the kids for 20 minutes. I got to go tweet about this Wheat Thins commercial. <laughs> Using the word thins. Do they know how triggering that is? Do they know how triggering the word thins is? Do they know that at all? <laughs> Just saying, anybody, anybody who spends time picketing outside of like a Walmart can't have anybody in their life who loves them. That's all I'm saying. Because if they oh did, God. if they did, they'd be with those people. They'd be with those people instead of with a bunch of other dopes holding picket signs. <laughs> I can't imagine with my lifestyle, and I, I'm not even a guy who works 100 hours a week. I'm not uh, Dr. Fauci right now working on the vaccine, but I'm busy enough. Mm -hmm. I could not imagine telling my wife, the woman I love more than anything in the world, who I get to spend precious few amounts of quality time, be like, listen, hon, you're going to have to take a rain check on date night tonight. All right, I got to get some hashtags trending. I got it. I don't know what you want me to do. Did you see that Duracell commercial? Did you see it? <laughs> Did you see that Duracell commercial with the, with the lack of, of gender equality? Uh, I got it. You sit here. <laughs> Big week for love. Had a <laughs> Valentine's Day. Hmm. I got so angry Valentine's Day morning. You know, I'm going to... To me, Valentine's Day is, it's a day for amateurs. It's a hmm. day for amateurs. When, when you're married to me, I get my wife flowers every single Sunday. Every Sunday, I go there. 7.30 in the morning, I go to the Marianos. I'm not bragging here. I'm not buying her dozens of flowers every, every week. I go to the Marianos. I go to Elva, my little flower lady. Elva, hi, Elva. You doing good, Pat? I'm doing good, Elva. How's Amy? She's good. <laughs> Let's make the flowers. Elva makes the flowers. I tried to do it this Sunday, going at my normal time, seven in the morning, and a bunch of schleppy dudes just lined up like a bunch of clueless idiots because <laughs> it's the one day out of the year that they get their wives flowers. You know what it reminds me of? You remember that watching these guys look at a flower selection. It reminds me of that scene in Zoolander where Zoolander and Hansel are trying to get into the computer and they're batting around at it and they're <laughs> acting like monkeys watching these guys walk around a floor. I don't know what flowers to get. What flowers should I get? Should I get the red flowers or should I get the pink flowers? And then you walk around the store and every one of these hapless doofuses is walking around with the same bouquet of flower. Every guy whose name is probably Chad and went to like Iowa or Ohio State and he's got a gut and he's walking around looking like a looking like a chump cuz you know and he's ruining it for me. I'm the guy who's in there every week doing this. <laughs> if you are married to a guy who only gets you flowers on Valentine's Day and your birthday, divorce him. Get rid of him. And I also want to address this new thing that started out as a joke on a TV show but has now become a thing people celebrate this whole Galentine's Day. Have you heard of this? It was on Parks and I Recreation. Have. It's Galentine's Day. Mm -hmm. We're going to get the girls together and we're going to celebrate Galentine's Day. Listen, Galentine's Day is the participation trophy of holidays. Okay? Just embrace that it's not a day for you. You're single and nobody loves you right now. <laughs> Okay. And that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Why do we have to make a separate holiday to include you? It's not a day for you. Maybe it's a day you should just sit back and reflect on why you're alone. And think, why am I so unlovable? Maybe that's a day. Instead of turning your back on it, 
and getting together with all of your girlfriends and talking about how terrible guys are. And you know what? Maybe it's not a fun day for single guys either. What about Palentine's Day? Shouldn't mm. men? Isn't that a little? <laughs> isn't that a little gender? Uh, uh, what's the word? You're leaving out a gender. Men feel romance too. What if I want to be with my fellas and talk about my feelings? <laughs> Why do we have to include everybody? It's not a holiday for you. <laughs> I'm not walking around on Mother's Day being like, oh, whoa, hey, what? Hey, come on. What about me? No. <laughs> I sit around and I think, I, I contemplate on why I'm not a woman. You should contemplate why you're single. <laughs> think about all the past relationships that have gone wrong. That's that's what what Galentine's Day should be. I posted a joke about that with all those guys. Uh-huh. in line and i wrote that i wrote out i posted a picture of the back of these guys heads this is why i really got to stop checking for reading and i don't read a lot of comments on on social media but sometimes i'll read oh, one can't. or two and then i just want to strangle somebody <laughs> i love these people who like people who can't perceive humor whatsoever so i don't post anything serious on social media it's all jokes and i posted about valentine's day and I'm like, amateur, at Valentine's Day is for amateurs. Just not, not anything crazy, just a dopey, stupid thing. And you get all these responses, and it's like, well, you know, maybe they have kids, and they're going to get flowers. For- Shut up! I don't want... I'm not here to deconstruct the logic of a joke. I'm just throwing jokes out there. It's better than getting nothing. No, it's not. It's not better than getting nothing. <laughs> Getting a pre-made bouquet. Sorry, you got nothing. I've 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 started a new hobby with uh, social media. This is really fun. This is this is a new hobby. I don't have a lot of hobbies, so I've been trying to look for a hobby. Some people have. What are your hobbies, James? Do you have any hobbies? Uh, you know, I'll play a video game. You like to play video again. games, yeah? yeah. You like you like shooting photography. I see some of your photography yeah. sometimes. Take some pictures, right? Play around in Photoshop. Sure, like that, play yeah. with the dog. You got a lot of hobbies. Yeah. You're a you're a Renaissance man. You like to lift Thank weights. You. I can I tell. Do. Yes, you can. You drink your protein yeah. powder, your creatine, all that mm-hmm. nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've I've come up with a new uh, fun hobby that I'm really, really enjoying. I'm spending a lot of time doing this. I didn't know that I would have uh, such a passion for it. Okay. So I scroll my Instagram <laughs> feed. They say you shouldn't <laughs> scroll your feed because that's when you waste the most amount of time. But I've turned that into a positive. So I like to scroll my Instagram feed of all the people I follow and mm-hmm. as soon as I see uh, any kind of motivational quote or meme, uh, I unfollow them. And <laughs> I am purging easily a thousand followers, people that I follow a day. I'm, I'm purging. <laughs> and it could be anything. It could be a personal thing. It could be a quote. It could be... Um, you know, a, a saying, a video, a Dalai Lama thing. Um, the only times I will allow that person to still be followed by me is if they're more successful than me. But if, you know, if I'm following and Bill Gates puts a motivational quote, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to definitely listen to what Bill Gates has to say. Right. <laughs> but. And nothing against this job, but it's like if you work in a nail salon and you're telling me about working, you know, following my dreams, I I have to consider the source. And maybe a <laughs> nail salon is your dream, and that's great. Right. But I'm just saying it has you gotta you gotta have the credentials to be preaching and you know, putting up a quote and just be like, just gonna leave this here. That's the caption. Just gonna leave this here. I don't know who needs to hear this, but just gonna leave this here. Delete. <laughs> Unfollow. <laughs> Blocked. Blocked. I'm not here for your faux motivation. You don't inspire me. Just going to leave this here. 
Just this one got me through a tough time. Just gonna leave this here. <laughs> what is the what is the what is the 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 bottom line barometer for success for an unfollow? Well, in this case, I'm only talking about material success because that's really okay. all that you're judged <laughs> okay, by on social media. Sure. I'm not judging by. Listen, if we were judging by inner peace, pfft, a lot of people more successful on there than me. <laughs> Night, if we're talking about like calm and going through life with a sense of enjoyment 99.9% of the people on there are more successful than me but their quotes <laughs> their quotes don't apply to that stuff their quotes are applying to like you know business ventures and just take time sometimes you just need to take a day you know it's like and i hate the cutesy ones i like if you're going to sure. give me like a a Ralph Waldo Emerson quote or a Dalai Lama quote yeah, yeah. okay i might but it's like one of those like cutesy ones. Like some days you're you just need a couple of days in bed eating Oreos and watching Netflix. <laughs> like yeah. I've seen what's out there. There's no shortage of people doing that. Sure. I think a lot of people are doing that at least two days a week. It's not like where this there's this American myth that where this overworked population and everybody out there is just grinding and crushing it every day. It's like, sure. have you been in a Jimmy John's lately? Do the people there, are they really, and that's just an example, are the people there really <laughs> burning through your sandwich and smiling and just, you know, and then when they're done with your sandwich, they're right back mopping the floors? Or are they usually sitting on the counter in the back with their phone, and then you walk up and they're like, what do you want? Oh, I'll have uh, the uh, BLT Deluxe. Who do you want on that? Well, what what comes on the BLT Deluxe? I want what's on what that picture is. That's what I want on it. So you want bacon? Yeah, bacon would be good. Bacon would be nice. Lettuce and tomato. And what else comes on it? I don't know. But it looks like a lot of things come on it. I'm looking at it. It's when I laugh when people talk about the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate is always too high. People are always complaining about the unemployment rate in this, mm -hmm. in this country. I don't think too many people are unemployed. I just think too many of the wrong people are unemployed. Because there are a lot of people I see on a daily basis that I'm like, this person should be unemployed. <laughs> we really do like... There is not, I'm out there. I'm out there in this world every day. And I know it's probably not the politically correct thing to say. And I know people are like, that's a terrible, but think about your daily day. Think about the places you go, the people you interact with who are on the other side of the employment equation. How many of them, think of the, think of the place you work. Think of the place you work and take a survey of everybody there. I'll give you a perfect example. I got, uh, I got, well, I'm going to say it. <laughs> Do it. I got, we have a mail room where I work. Oh, no. And uh, Careful. we got, I got some packages delivered to said mail room. And I got an email from the mail room saying, hey, you got some packages down here ready for you to pick them up. Now, I read that and I thought to myself, huh, I just got an email from the mail guy to go pick up my mail. Now, perhaps this is just me, but I would think. If I was running the mailroom, part of my duties, maybe not all of them, but part of my duties would be delivering the mail. <laughs> it's in the job title. Mail guy. It's not receive the mail and call somebody to pick it up guy. It's an all-encompassing all inclusive, all duties included, mail guy. Mm. And this guy, good at what he does. 
I get two emails, he comes to check and follow up. Did you get the email? At least he is consistent in what he does. Most people out there don't even give you that. I want to I want to talk about entertainment now. It's a, it's an entertainment slash politics uh, story. Um, the Rock has a new show. I, th- I believe it, today is Tuesday. We're recording this. I think The Rock's new show is uh, premiering tonight. And let me preface everything I'm about to say by stating here and now that I love The Rock. I find him to be one of the most charming sons of guns. In entertainment today, he's uh, electrifying. He's electrifying. The guy just lights up the screen. But I think somebody needs to sit The Rock down and and have a conversation with The Rock. Because this this whole thing, this whole thing is him legitimately laying the groundwork for a potential presidential run. He keeps talking about it. The whole premise of the show, it's Young Rock, where present-day Rock is a presidential candidate, and he's giving an interview about his life, and then the whole thing is played. It's juxtaposed flashbacks with him running for president. Sure. He gave an interview this week, because he has said in the past that he is seriously considering a run for president. <laughs> and he was asked about it again this week, and he said, listen. If the people want it, it's something I'll have to consider. Which, to me, demonstrates a lack of self-awareness on a (laughs) staggering level. On a staggering... If the people want it, I'll do it. And I look at his qualifications to be the president, and that would be like me saying, you know, if somebody came up to me and said, hey... I would like you to perform brain surgery on me. And I said, well, if you're asking for it, I'm going to have to do it. (laughs) I don't know that I'm qualified for it. I don't know that I have a modicum of experience or the requisite intelligence to open up your skull and mess around with your life force. But if you're asking for me to do it, well, then by God, I'm going to do it. This guy actually thinks he can be president. I know The Rock is the biggest movie star on the planet. But we're not talking about Tom Hanks here. You know, we're not talking about the guy who played Captain Phillips. Or the guy who was in Philadelphia. Cultural, touchstone, watershed moments in American cinema. We're talking about a guy who was in G.I. Joe. You know what I mean? We're talking about Jumanji. Love The Rock. Love The Rock. But somebody has got to sit this guy down and say, listen, you big juice head. You're in a a Jungle Cruise Disney movie coming up next. You really need to... Name five countries in the UN. Name five countries, Rock. (laughs) What's your, what's your foreign policy? And don't say giving China the people's elbow, because that doesn't count. I, well, follow- I, think, this, yeah. I yep. think this begs the question. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, and I, I'm almost afraid to ask it because sure. of the implication, but mm-hmm. uh, who would be a better president, Donald Trump or The Rock? Because they're oh, the same thing. They would both be. A, listen, I am not... Talking about Donald Trump's policies, okay? Sure. Because I I don't care. Right. I'm just saying, you saw how things were run when a celebrity became the president. Right. It it was it was it was a kangaroo court. It was it was romper room. It was insanity every single day. Yeah. Are we gonna have the rock? Could you imagine the rock at press briefings? Calling people jabronis, huh? Oh, give me that, dude. Giving the people's eyebrow. I mean, this guy, I like him. Again, I like him, but I follow him. I follow him on Instagram, right? 
All this guy does is post about how hard he works. That's all he does. <laughs> Rising and grinding, <laughs> clanging and banging. Look at all this chicken I got to eat today. And I respect his hustle. His hustle is admirable. But like, is he really working that hard? You know, I mean, it's, it's not like he's standing at a bus stop at five in the morning in Chicago in the middle of February. He's doing pull-ups. I mean, you know, hard work. <laughs> he posted something on Instagram. It was a couple, couple of months back. He was, he was late for work. And he had a metal gate to his, to, his ha- to his mansion, I'm sure. And the metal gate got locked. So instead of being late for work, the rock ripped the metal gate off of its hinges and drove away. And he posts this, and people are like, people are going, oh my God, what dedication, what hard work. Yeah, they're doing that because he's the rock. But if he was Dwayne, who lived next door to you, and you just looked out your window one morning, and your neighbor was ripping a gate off with his bare hands, how would you react? Be like, ah, shit, honey, Dwayne next door is having another roid rage. Kids, get in the basement. We practice this. <laughs> Come on. He's really the rock for president. I am going to watch the show, though. It looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah, right. I am going to watch it. I'll watch anything that guy does. I sat through Hobbs and Shaw. Loved it. <laughs> loved it those two the chemistry the chemistry between those two and you had idris ah oh. it's great Ah, oh, great film great film poor roman reigns they put him in that movie you know they're trying to turn him into the next big superstar <laughs> they didn't let him talk though no that was a good move not to let that guy talk <laughs> that guy has the look down man he's got that he's got that slick long hair i wish i could do that i wish i didn't have this this italian fro I could grow that long hair, just oil it up, do one of those, you know, the rest, and the oh, yeah. sweat goes everywhere. It's all wet. You just sneak it back like a Seth Rollins or a, or a, get the big arm tattoo. Yeah. It's going to be a great show. Right. The other thing that's on this week, one of those, that Nick Walenda guy is doing another stunt. You know, the, the high wire guys? Yeah, sure. You know, he goes across a canyon. I'm always yeah. fascinated by by the spectacle of those, you know, at its at its most basic form. People are really, let's be honest, they're tuning in to watch if he dies or not. That's the right. whole. If you knew he was going to make it, you wouldn't watch you wouldn't watch the show. But you're you're really tuning in. One day he's going to fall. One day, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> it's going to happen. He's going to fall. Something's going to go wrong. There's going to be a stiff breeze. The fail safe that is supposed to keep him alive in front of a TV audience is going to, and then everybody's going to be horrified. Why? Everybody's going to be, why did I watch that? You know why you were watching it? Because this is what you were hoping to see. <laughs> Subconsciously, that's the only reason you're watching it. Let's see. It's like you, NASCAR. You're saying outwardly, let's see if he makes it. But inwardly, you're saying, this, this guy might die. You're bringing it on yourself. NASCAR is another thing. You ever think, like the whole, the whole aim every week in NASCAR is not to get in a massive car accident. <laughs> right, yeah. You apply that logic. Could you imagine if every time you drove out to the grocery store, you had to think about, wow, I could get flipped over eight times and set on fire. Right. <laughs> that's their whole, that's their whole thing. Every week. want to talk about uh, there's a couple of, couple of mega church uh, scandals, which I always, I always love when this happens. I just, let me tell you, I, like just I love seeing hypocrisy play out on a public stage. Just, mm, I just, mm, I love it. There were two of them. There was this guy, this, I don't even know who this guy is, this Ravi Zacharias. I guess he was the head of a global Christian organization. He died, so he's going to escape any kind of punishment. Engaged in some sexual misconduct. 
you know, you know, the norm, making a masseuse touch his genitals, you know, the, just the, all these guys have massage therapists. Let me just say, if, if you are a massage therapist who's called to any spiritual leader's room, make sure you got a wing, wingman or a wing lady. No, no, these pastors, they don't have that much stress that they need a massage three times a week. Just know when you get that call. When you're working at the Massage Envy and the call comes in that Joel Osteen needs a thrice-weekly standard appointment for a neck rub, go into it cautiously. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> this happens all the time with these guys. And then there's the, the, the continuing thing with this Hillsong church. That's the, this guy, Carl Lentz. He was the Hillsong pastor. Hillsong is like the cool church, right? And this guy, skinny jeans, the tight haircut, good-looking guy, fake tan, black rim glasses. You know, he's hip. He's, he got in trouble. He cheated on his wife. He and the other pastor were, you know, making a ton of dough and, and banging chicks and doing all this. And everybody's horrified. I'm just, you know, if you are ever... In a, in a house of worship, and uh, the pastor or the minister is in any way cool, know that something's going on. <laughs> if, if the pastor or the guy has any sort of legitimate charisma or, a, you know, a good, a good vibe going on, he's definitely having sex with somebody he shouldn't be having sex with. I grew up in churches all my life. None of our pastors were cool. And I knew that that was a good, safe place to be. Nobody's trying to, to take down the guy in Dockers with a tucked-in, short sleeve button-down shirt. Nobody's trying to have sex with that guy. That guy, <laughs> very vanilla, that's where you want to be. We had one semi-charismatic pastor in one of our churches growing up. And he wasn't like a, like a hip guy, but he kind of had like that manager of a, of a car lot thing going on. Like sure. he could, right. It was a guy, he had like a, like a little ounce of coolness in him. And guess what? Yeah. He was banging the organist. So <laughs> if you, if you ever go to a church and you ever like have an interaction with the, with the pastor or the deacon and you walk away saying, wow, that guy's pretty cool. Get out of there. Get out. You don't want a cool, you don't want a cool pastor. Speaking of not cool, Gen Z uh, says that emojis are not cool anymore. Gen hmm. Z is not, is not using the emoji. The article was, sorry, millennials, the emoji is not cool anymore. You know, this happens with, with every new generation that that comes to uh, that comes to to pop culture power they decide what's cool and anybody who doesn't follow that mandate or the rules that they have set forth is old is out of touch and um i just want to say uh to gen z that uh you may think not using emojis is cool, but what I think is really cool is not having any student loan debt. And okay. <laughs> I'm in a pretty good place too. <laughs> you know, so you have 80,000 TikTok followers. That's, that's fantastic. You know what I have? A very robust investment portfolio. That's what I have. I think we value uh, the wrong cool things. I think we value the wrong cool things. When I meet a young kid, teenager, they're like, I don't, I don't know who you are. Do you know who David Dobrik is? I'm like, no, I don't. Well, I do, so I'm, so I'm cool. I follow David Dobrik, so I'm cool. I'm like, oh, that's... That's really, that's really cool. You know what I follow? My, I follow up my financial advisor's emails and we talk about <laughs> how I can do anything I want right now and you still live with your parents. And uh, 
So who's cool now, Chip? Who's cool now? People take this thing to heart. I just want to be, I don't want to be cool. I don't give a shit. You know what's cool? Not having to leave your house to work, which I'm doing right now. That's cool. <laughs> this is cool. You're looking at the coolest guy you know. I'm going to keep using emojis out of spite. I just started using them. It took me a long time, and I don't use them all. I don't use them all, but if I want to use emojis, I will use emojis judgment-free, you little shits. <laughs> Tired of these kids, man. Tired of these kids with all their new, their new terminology. Changes on a dime, man. All the time. You don't know it. These kids will kill you. It's like I was saying the other night, man. Sometimes I wish I had a kid just so that I could have somebody on the inside to give me a heads up every now and again on, on how to like, you know, like tell me, hey, dad, you know, just a heads up. We're not saying down syndrome anymore. We're saying up, up syndrome. It's very much more positive and inclusive. I can't keep track and I don't want to unless you're listening to this podcast and I need you as a, as a listener, then I'll listen. <laughs> but otherwise I'll keep using these emojis out of spite. So that's why I'm keeping this beard, by the way, I want to shave this beard in the worst way. I, ha- I hate it. I hate it. I'm keeping it for two reasons. I'm keeping it because my wife loves it and I'm keeping it because a lot of people are telling me, that they hate it because it looks like Trump. I was telling you that. And, <laughs> and the more people who keep saying that to me, it's like I draw energy from that. Do you understand? <laughs> like at the end of Batman versus Superman when Doomsday and you thought like, oh, they're, they're weakening him, they're attacking him, but he took all that lightning and just became a bigger, more devastating villain. That's what I'm becoming. <laughs> Except instead of lightning, it's just, it's spite. It's spite that's right here. And it's just, it's just, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, what's the word they use? Masticizing. And it's just growing. And it's, it's, I just, I suck it in like more power. Give me more. Give me more. They keep it up. I'm, I'm going to grow this thing until I look like an Ayatollah. That's how long I'm going to grow this thing. <laughs> I hate it so much. I want to. I want to. I want to shave it so bad, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. It's going to stay here. I just until until I hear from a thousand people, it's going to stay here. Um, listen, I want to say I do want to hear from some of you. Um, I don't think we've given the email address, have we? Uh, mm-hmm. If you ever want to get in touch, you want to suggest any show topics. Uh, listen, chances are they won't be that good, and I won't use them. But I will. <laughs> I will consider them. I promise you, I will consider them. Uh, my email address is pat at patthomasulo.com. I want to give that out. Um, you know, listen, I, 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 I say this, um, I'll be honest, because I think it's the right thing to do. Um, but if you had a lot of good ideas, you'd be doing the podcast instead of me. But like I said, I'll listen to the ideas. I think it's a nice, it's a nice dialogue. You know, you feel like you have more of a say in this. And that makes you inclined to come back. And I'll email you back and I'll say, that's a good idea. Listen for the next 11 episodes. I might mention it. And that's when I hook you. (laughs) Give me a whole list. Ah, Bill, those are great ideas. Listen for the next six to nine months and I might use one. But one might get through in the next episode. You don't know. That's what we want to do. We're building a community here. Um, If you've you've, uh, not subscribed on the iTunes or the uh, Spotify or any of the others, Subscribe, will you? Let's keep this thing going. Uh, leave, leave reviews. Leave reviews and ratings. It's not that hard. It only takes a minute. I myself have given myself five stars easily 63 times already. It's very <laughs> easy to do. If I can give myself five stars, so can you. Uh, subscribe on the YouTube, the youtube.com slash Pat Tomasulo Comedy. Uh, hit the subscribe, the notifications, leave reviews on there. It pushes up the, uh, the algorithm. And tell a friend. You know, they say, they say grassroots is the best way to grow something. You know, work for Bernie Sanders. It helped him to lose a primary twice. So 
I think you're a Bernie bro, aren't you? Is that hurt? Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hardcore. Buddy. Did you give him eleven dollars? I did. Forty two if I get eleven dollars <laughs> from everybody in the country. <laughs> if I get ninety nine cents from ninety nine percent of the country, it'll be a revolution. He's not wrong. And neither am I, right? No, no. Let's go the Bernie route. Yeah. Let's go the Bernie route. <laughs> <laughs> do all that tell a friend this week for real tell one friend tell one friend say you got to listen to this podcast this thomas sulo guy he's uh he's fantastic um should i talk about this last thing or should i should i say good night for the day this is a ah <sighs> I'm going to say go for it because it's bothering you so much. Well, I don't know that it's it's bothering me. It's going to bother gonna say other it's, people? I'm not going to say it's bothering me. I'm just going to say I don't know if this opens up a door. You know, we're, there's this yeah. constant push and pull with mm -hmm. wanting to be progressive and push society forward, which is very necessary. But I am a firm believer in... You know, society, it's like a seesaw. I think sometimes we need to be much more liberal and progressive. And I think sometimes we need to be a little bit more uh, conservative. You know, there's, there's got to be a, a, a balance. I'm a, I'm a guy, I'm a man of the people. So in the UK, <laughs> nurses there have been asked not to use the term breast milk anymore what well they're been asked not to say breast milk to be more inclusive of trans parents and i am all for inclusivity i think you just look at this guy and you look at him you say there's a tolerant guy right there <laughs> there's a guy who doesn't overreact who doesn't uh <laughs> Make a bigger issue out of things than he should. And I could see if it's a trans parent, well, then maybe you don't say it for them. But I'm just thinking if I'm a, if I'm a new mom and I'm getting ready to suckle my newborn and they say, hey, it's time to feed your baby some breast slash chest milk, Come again. Uh, or they could say, uh, would you like to give them some milk from the feeding mother? Or human milk. Human milk. And I got to think that however you identify, if you're producing milk, that means you still have some breast activity in there. So... Medically speaking, scientifically speaking, breast milk would make a lot of sense. But if we're going to start changing the names of fluids that come out of pretty sexually specific <laughs> organs, <laughs> where does it stop? <laughs> where does it stop? Am I going to be at dinner one night and say, I need to excuse myself? I need to get rid of some pee pee juice. I have to. What? I have to, uh, you know, deposit some butt fudge. I don't know. Like, are we gonna? It just opens a whole Pandora's box. Box. And I'm not here. I'm not the guy who has a solution. I'm not. I've said from episode one. You're not going to learn anything on this show. I'm not going to teach you anything. I, I'm not the guy. I'm an idiot. But what I can do is set topics up for discussion and debate. So here's what I want you all to do. Um, this weekend, when you're having dinner with your parents, bring this up. <laughs> See where the conversation goes. We all learn from, from, from discussion, right? We got to talk things through. Ask your grandpa who is in Korea. Ask him about this. <laughs> Ask him what he thinks. Get a, have a nice dinner with your gay cousin. 
and your Vietnam vet uncle. Just bring this up. See where it goes. See where it goes. Ask them there. And, and that's, that's really what, what our society is founded upon. It's founded upon vigorous debate where we have respect for each other. You know? Bring it up. <laughs> Ask your Uncle Don what he thinks of transgender bathrooms. Bring it up. <laughs> Bring it up. Because we're not talking. We're dying. All right? I'm going to finish this up right now. I'm going to call my parents. I'm going to ask them all about it. Ma. I'd appreciate it if you don't say breast milk anymore. I'm not saying that's how I feel. I just want to gauge her reaction. I think we all need to just... We all need to talk. That's what I'm going to leave you with. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And um, if I've touched you in a uh, totally platonic and metaphoric way, <laughs> then my, my, my job is done here. Uh, that is the podcast this week, everybody. Uh, be well, and, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>